the point in starting any rugby coverage this week without checking in first on Camp Farrell. I think, you know, things that we, we could get better, um, our discipline at the end, you know, almost let them back in to, to have an opportunity to go and uh, get a five metre drive and um, probably a couple of penalties which are avoidable. So those are the sort of things we, we talk about a lot, but it's important that we we stay on, on point and make sure that we don't give sides like South Africa the chance. Our more defence at the end was excellent and and uh, put the game to bed. But you know, there's those sorts, those sorts of things that, that you want to make sure in the last 20 minutes you're, you're on the front foot. We, we did well to get up the other end and, and we got a scrum penalty to get the three points to take us to five points ahead. Uh, but I think we also let them, uh, gave them a little bit of a, a window to get back into our um, into our uh, 22 and, and give them an opportunity to to get some access at the end. So that's certainly an area that we need to make sure we stay on top of um, when we, you know, we're building up to Scotland. Jack is back. Jack is back. Training. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's all good. Jack is a is a really important part of the squad. He's he's good around the group. Um, and I think at certain stages he's probably felt like it, it might not come right. But he's he's worked really hard. Uh, he's done everything he can to to get himself in this position. And I guess we've been fortunate with injuries in his position as well that we haven't had to um, call upon him. So I think as number of things have aligned to, to, to allow Jack to get himself right and I think it's it was definitely the right thing for us and, and when Faz talked about that position and him not having had the, had the rugby coming into the, the the World Cup it, we all felt it was the right thing to do to, to have him uh, and give him the opportunity and I think he's we're starting to see um, you know the, the Jack that, that we we'd like to have seen a few weeks ago but obviously injury has, has not allowed him to, to, to be in that place so he's in a good place and and um, and um, there's no reason why he won't be available next week. Yeah, will he be picked? Well, we might discuss that throughout the evening. Simon needs to be in good form. 33 guys fit. That's the main thing, anyway. Yeah, look, we talked about, obviously, um, if we want to go far in this tournament, you know, the players available to us will be we key to that. Um, you know, and it, it is great to see Jack uh, Conan back involved and, and hopefully getting some game time um, this weekend. He's been an important part of this Ireland squad the last number of years. He's just been really unlucky with injuries, so I'm sure he'll be raring to go and, and wanting to make a mark on this World Cup. Yeah, he's the type of player who you think could have an impact in a massive game and there's only four more to go. Yep, he's a little bit of a forgotten man, in my opinion, like in terms of where he was with the British and Irish Lions, starting number eight in the test matches at the top of his career and then all of a sudden a certain Keelan Doris comes along and everybody thinks that his best position is number eight, as do I. Mm. And Jack Conan finds himself on the bench because Peter O'Mahony is, you know, the glue that holds that back row together with Josh van der Fleer making it up. So, you know, it's, it's a big couple of weeks for Jack Conan. He hasn't played hardly any rugby in the last, what, six weeks. Um, is he fully fit? I'm sure we'll find out if he's selected against Scotland. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But it's this whole thing, I think Gordon Darcy wrote an interesting piece during the week. There's a lot of great coverage out there this week, not surprisingly. And he was referring to 2018, when, and you and I worked on that match when Ireland beat the All Blacks in Lansdowne Road in the Aviva finally. And that emotional pitch, it possibly wasn't as good as France where you were on Saturday in Paris, but it was up there and then it fell off a cliff. So how do you... What's the best way of navigating this kind of emotional thing that you've got to keep it on the, on the, on the top high for four matches? Look, it can be really tough for players, you know, and this tournament, you know, hopefully will go on for another number of weeks for Ireland and you're cooped up together, spending a lot of time with these uh, guys, you know, and from match to match, and particularly that South Africa match, the guys will be coming off that feeling very elated, obviously emotions running really high, but happy to, come, to have come out on the right side of it. Uh, luckily, they'll have had a little bit of downtime this week, a little bit of time away from family. So that, that's helpful. And had a little break, yeah, because sometimes you just need to reset and recharge and, and take your mind off things, and then they're able to have this week off and go into the, the Scotland game completely refreshed, you know, and not getting ahead of ourselves and not looking too far ahead into a quarterfinal just yet. Yeah, I guess we, we could probably say that other things being equal, there should be at least two more matches. But you know from 2011, which is always dragged up, the good, the, oh, the go. good and the bad. Go, you were brilliant, though. <laughs> oh, <thanks. You> know? <laughs> but, like, it was, it was, you know, that emotional intensity. How can you? Is there a way? Is it just in the lap of the gods, whether it's repeated the following time? Dara, do you know what? I think the way the format has been staggered for Ireland in terms of the group games, the week off after the big massive high of beating South Africa, then you're leading into the Scotland week, which is a must-win game. 
I think it's sort of panned out really well for us. Um, the boys have been in Disneyland Paris with their families for a couple of days. You know, the other guys have been out and about, seeing parts of the country. And I would be, if we had to play New Zealand in a World Cup quarterfinal this weekend, mm -hmm. after coming off such a big high, and you were there, Hannah, you, you, you said it almost felt like a rugby World Cup final. Mm -hmm. The people that were, you know, the crowds that were there cheering us on, 30, 40,000 Irish fans there, the amount of people sitting watching us on television, Dara, it was just extraordinary. So I would be a little more cautious going into a game if we were playing a quarter-final this week, but we're not, and that's the beauty of this competition so far for us. Yeah, would you go along with that? So it's the kind of, even though the intense game didn't come at the very start, which France got, and again New Zealand, I think the, the tournament is wonderful, it's unique and all the rest of it, but it is strange that we won't see the All Blacks, uh, you see them night one and then it's three weeks. Yeah, look, and um, they're in a bit of a, a tricky position at the minute where their pool is a little bit all over the place and they have to, to go and beat Italy uh, in order to make it for a quarter final. For Ireland, as you mentioned, I think the pool stage has uh, worked out really well for us in that we had a nice couple of games to build into things and kind of get our flow and our momentum. And then we, we kind of, you know, hit a little bit of a peak beating South Africa at the weekend. And we didn't play, you know, the perfect game, but we, we did well enough uh, to get over the line. And it's good that we maybe have some little tweaks to change in order to improve mm. for an upcoming quarterfinal, um, you know, and they can just take it down a little notch. It's still must win against Scotland, but it, it's, you know... They're not the same as, as coming up against a South African team. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's the beginning of part two of the World Cup. Scotland, like, is, can you do that or is that just too handy to do? Like, you know, say, OK, part one is over now, part two. Um, potentially, Dara. Um, I, you listen to Andy Farrell and the lads all game by game, the old cliches. Um, but in a World Cup, you know, it, it has to be. It There's no better be. philosophy, really, no, is there? No, there isn't. There isn't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the Scotland match, I think... Listening to Gregor Townsend post-match interview after you know the hammering the other night, he was saying like, "Oh yeah, everybody's you know already saying that Ireland are playing New Zealand, like and they've still got to play us." Yes, you know, and there was a glint in his eye, and um, you know a couple of sarcastic comments that come out of him about this game at the weekend. So, but that's kind of why my question is is because like, again, no, this is terrible. But if Ireland play with that emotional intensity, you think that they'll be able to take care of Scotland. You know. Well, they've proven over the last what eight times that they've played that they can you know, get, get up to that level. And I think if Ireland even play at 85, 90%, that they'll still get the victory. And Hannah and I were chatting, like Ireland are due a drop-off. There's going to be a drop-off at some stage right. for like a 20-minute, 30-minute period in a match. If it's against Scotland, they might concede a couple of scores. If it's against a quarter-final against New Zealand, it might be a little more hard-hitting. So, you know, it's just about staying at that consistent level, Dara. And I think, you know, Ireland have proven over the last couple of years that they're very good at doing that.